is that your opponent can just scoop whenever they want. They can poopity scoopity whoop. Should Victory Dragon be unbanned? Let's talk about it. Dual sauce, extra sauce. Hit that subscribe. So let's talk about Victory Dragon. I briefly mentioned Victory Dragon in my 2003 Android Yada format history video. So check that out first if you haven't. But Victory Dragon is really interesting because he was the first ever Yu-Gi-Oh! price card for the 2003 World Championships. And he has a very interesting effect. Wait, 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 don't forget to subscribe if you haven't because that helps me upload more videos and know that you like content like this. See, his effect is that this card cannot be special summoned. To tribute summon this card, you must tribute three dragon type monsters. If this card attacks your opponent directly and reduces their life points to zero, you win the match. Now he has 2400 attack and 3000 defense. So the thing with Victory Dragon is that he is not very powerful, it's only 2400 attack and you gotta tribute not one not two not four but three dragon type monsters to do this and really in the early game of Yu-Gi-Oh there wasn't too much good dragon decks or really much of any there are some in the Yu-Gi Kaiba format but by 2003 you didn't really have much and I tried making a deck around victory dragon it's pretty hard you got what troop dragon eh you know I guess you could use Lord of D and Fluid of Summon Dragon but 2400 is very weak attack. You're not going to beat over any stronger monsters like Jinzo or a Summon Skull. You're not going to beat over that kind of stuff. And with 3000 defense, that's a very high, but you're not going to want to have this card in defense mode unless you want to play this really safe game around him. But this card is meant to be like a one-two punch and it really doesn't act like that at all. They really needed to have switched his attack and defense, make his attack 3000 and his defense 2400. That would make him a lot better. But there's other weird things about Victory Dragon because the thing is, there have been plenty other price cards that have been released in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh that have the same requirement of whether it's tributing a bunch of monsters or exceeding summon a bunch of monsters. All for the point that if you reduce your opponent's life points to zero, then you would win the match. Not the game, not like game one and game two. You win the entire match altogether. But those cards had a text on them saying that they are not legal to play in a duel. So you just can't use them in any sort of competitive format. With Victory Dragon, when he was released, he didn't have this clause and he still doesn't have this clause on him. He still has this effect where it, he is perfectly legal if it wasn't for being put on the eventual ban list and stayed on there ever since because it's a very powerful effect to just instantly win the match. If you win game one with him, then you're not going to play a game two because you've already beat your opponent with just the victory dragon. And it's very powerful and very impactful in that regard. The problem is, it's not just inflicting damage. You have to attack your opponent's life points directly. So even if your opponent has a monster on the field and you have enough points to defeat them with Victory Dragon, you can't do that. Which makes him very hard to play and assuming he doesn't get destroyed in any other regard because he doesn't have any inherent protection with him. So that's the, really the problem with Victory Dragon is that he has so much problem getting him out. Now, nowadays, there are better ways to summon him. When you have decks like Dragon Links or Blue Eyes White Dragon or Guard Dragons, different ways to really swarm the fueled dragon type monsters, he is easier to get out and a lot of decks tend to wipe your opponent's field before just killing them in one to three turns. So Victory Dragon, if he was taken off the ban list today, he would be arguably even better than before because before it was really hard to do anything with them because the game was just that slow and it was just that crappy of a monster but you're still giving up a lot of resources to summon victory dragon which quite frankly sucks you rather have other cards that benefit you like a borrowed savage dragon or the guard dragons or a blue eyes alternative dragon i could go on victory dragon is just He's not that good of a card. 
because here's the trick with Victory Dragon, is that even if you summon him, even if your opponent is wide open with 500 life points left and you go to attack with Victory Dragon for the match, your opponent could just concede the game. There you go to game two, your attack doesn't technically finish through the life points, doesn't go to zero, and you're kind of screwed. And that's a big problem with a card like this, is that your opponent can just scoop whenever they want. They can poopity scoopity whoop. And I have looked into this. I have researched that some people have said that, at least in the past, the OCG ruling was that you can only concede a game if it was during your turn, but I could not find any official confirmation on this, and that's kind of sketchy. What seems to be the case is that a lot of OCG players tend to have more, well, respect for the game. They tend to be a bit more, uh, they played a lot more honorably than us dumb Americans would, or, or this could just be just telling other OCG players that, hey, you can't scoop until it's your turn, so I can attack you, and that way it's even dirtier, so I don't even know. But again, I can't find any official confirmation on if this was an actual ruling that was changed, or if it was something that was different in the TCG or what, but from what I gather, it's you can concede whenever you want in a game, until someone shows me otherwise, that what it seems like, and probably why Victor Dragon was thrown on the ban list in the first place, because any format, he could pick up that match, and that is crazy powerful for an effect. Again, it was early Yu-Gi-Oh, so they didn't make it illegal to play. These cards, or for that matter, even a ban list, didn't exist by this point. So should Victory Dragon become legal? Should he be taken off the ban list? I personally think he should stay on there because it's a very degenerative effect to not just beat your opponent, but beat the entire match with them. And it's much easier to get him out nowadays. And sure, while he's not that good, I think just the effect itself existing is inherently very bad for a state of play, especially since you can get other monsters out and other destruction effects out. And the game is so fast now, it would only be a matter of time before some top players really broke Victory Dragon, even if he was at one. Now, I don't really know the meta of the traditional format where everything illegal, everything that's banned is at least a one of, but I can only imagine with that, you already have way other better cards anyway, so even if he was legal, I don't know if people would play him anyway, so you're left in this weird two-sided thing is either people are going to break him or no one's going to play him at all. There might be a middle ground where there's some cheeky decks, I'm sure that would exist too, but I think just for the benefit of the game, he should stay on the ban list and not come back. Because while I love Victory Dragon, his design, he's just like really cool looking golden dragon, I love it, it's iconic, it shouldn't happen. So let me know what you think about this video. Did you enjoy it? What other kind of discussions would you want me to see? Let me know down below in the comments or on Twitter at Jandrozone or on my Discord at the launch base. And also check out my Patreon and my merch and my membership because any support to my channel would really, really help me. And I look forward to seeing all my next video because I upload weekly, three times a week currently. So yeah. Of course, until then, have a wonderful day.